welcome to Hamed's Corner. I want to talk to you about authenticity and being real. What it means to be genuine, particularly in a society today. A society that values things, titles, and superficial things over people. So why is it so hard to just be ourselves? And why is it so hard to be genuine? Now imagine you're in a restaurant and you take and you order something off the menu it looks delicious. And when it comes to your table, you take a bite and it tastes like crap. Because the chef's got full of great ideas, but you know she or he is afraid to try those ideas out. So they're trying to be like someone else, copying someone else's menu. Imagine you're on the phone with some kind of trouble support call and the technician is reading a script that doesn't cover the problem that you're having. And it's too in each one of those cases, these people have not found the courage to push forward, push forward and to be themselves. We all lose out. So I want to talk about what it really means to be real. And to tell you now, it doesn't take an Ivy League education, it doesn't take money, it doesn't take connections. To be real, to be authentic, to be yourself, what it's really going to take is courage. It's going to take courage. In fact, courage plays a major role in any major endeavor particularly when it comes to developing yourself and becoming more. Wherever people gather and act out of cowardice, you will definitely have dysfunction. That's what it is, it's plain and simple. But the good news is that courage is just like any other muscle, that with exercise, it becomes stronger. And so you can exercise your courage muscle. But in the flip side of it, that if you don't exercise it, it will grow weaker. It'll atrophy. Right? You're either getting stronger or weaker in any area of life, depending on what kind of attention you place in that area. And, that, and courage is no different. In fact, you're either becoming more courageous or more cowardly based on your choices. So what I'm hoping is that this message will encourage you to work on your authenticity and also your courage. Let's dive into what it really means to be authentic. So one of the first things about being real, the first aspects of them is, is letting go of labels and judgments of other people. As many of you know, it's incredibly hard to be yourself while holding on to the judgments and the labels that other people place on you. It's like having three or four or five different personalities running in your head at the same time. Because on one side, you're trying to be who you are or who you believe you should be, but then you're trying to reconcile that with all those different labels, all those expectations from other people, other communities, cultures, and other things like that. I find the, the most important person to please is you. And if you're busy trying to live up to everyone's label or you're trying to interact and disprove or prove and you're out there spending all those wheels and energy dealing with some other label from outside of you, then how are you ever going to be the person that you want to be? The labels that other people put on you do not define you. Two, being humble. Ladies, how many times have you been to the salon and you got your hair done up real nice? And yet your shoes and your outfit was looking tight. And when you went down the street, you knew everybody was looking at you. And you were like, oh, you know, I got it going on, right? And you made it like, you know, you're like not even giving people the time of day. Because, you know, you just, because you got, you up there. You up there, you know? Guys, I mean, I've been this, my, I've experienced this myself. I put on suits and felt like a million bucks. I mean, I was tight, right? Shoes, suit was all together, just everything was mm, couldn't tell me anything. Guess what happens? I start walking a little bit funny, you know, talking a little bit different. What 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 the hell's that? But you know, when I'm just kicking around with my sweats and my tennis shoes and just kind of laying low, everything's cool. I'm just down to earth, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump into that suit and bam, my head is all freaking on the heads in the clouds somewhere. But you know what I notice? That in my natural state, when I'm just relaxed, at a relaxed state, just being myself, 
I'm, I'm at my best. I'm connecting with people. I'm empathetic. My emotional IQ is high. I can work with people. You know, I can listen. I see people. But then when you get someone in that, you know, that, that power suit, right? You get that, you know, feeling all elevated. Then all of a sudden, instead of seeing people, you start looking through them. And where is that coming from? I believe that it comes from that in this society, we've learned to associate power and privilege with marginalizing people, right? We've learned to associate having power and being in a privileged position with being separate, vice connected to people. And the way we've learned it is because we've experienced it from other people who have had power. And so after you've been burned a few times, you learn the system. And because everyone wants to feel important, once you get in a position of feeling powerful, whether you're just looking really attractive or maybe you've been given some privilege somewhere, you know, you're in a position of having some kind of power, a lot of us fall into that unfortunate habit of disconnecting with people because we're too good. We're too good to, we don't have to associate, right? Now we're in a position where they will serve us. In fact, many of you have experienced this at whatever organizations you may find yourself in. When you think about leadership, do you think of a person at the top who is helping the people at the lower stations to do things and to get what they need, who's enabling and supporting and connected? Is that what you think about when you think of leaders or boss from your experience? Or is it more common for you to see a leader as a privileged person at a higher station that everyone is supposed to serve. What has been your experience with leadership and with a boss? Chances are your experience is, your answer is that they've been a part of a privileged class. And many of the folks who have been at some point, whatever, roughed up by these so-called leaders and these bosses over time are waiting to get the same position so you can do the same thing. And that leads me to the point that I want to make here. Think about the bosses who weren't, weren't so good. The ones who may have fell into that cliche instance of serve me, I'm at the top. And think about how you felt about them. Do you respect them? How do you, if you're honest with yourself, how do you really feel about them? And now that you've thought about that, I want to ask you, do you really want to be like that? When you get your power, your position, when you're feeling good, when you're looking good, whatever is happening, good fortunes happen to you, do you want to recreate that in yourself? Knowing how you felt about it when others were doing it. See, that's a big key. And that's having the courage to choose for yourself. And when you are looking just like a million bucks and you're feeling like a champ, when you are the boss, I want you to think about being humble and how much more beautiful that's and powerful that's going to make you and how that's going to inspire other people. And remember that you have a choice. The third point is admitting when you're wrong. People who are genuine don't have a problem with admitting their mistakes. And they know that this is not a crime to make a mistake. In fact, it's inevitable. Everyone's going to make mistakes. It's unavoidable. Only the fool expects to not make mistakes. And then, on the other hand, if someone come, approaches you to confess that they've made a mistake, you don't want to be like the shark waiting for a drop of blood to hit the water so you can pounce on them. That's what the cowards do. And if the shoe's on the other foot and you're receiving this from someone else, it's having the grace and the dignity to accept that from someone else without jumping on them to try to tear them apart. So admitting when you're wrong. In fact, there's actually a scene that depicts this really well. And it's in this movie 2012. Danny Glover plays the president and he's accepting some really hard news, some information from another character. Let's go ahead and roll that clip so you can see that. 
tectonic plates. English, doctor. The seismic in activity in the West Coast is not caused by, by regular earthquakes, and these so-called surface cracks have nothing to do with shifting fault lines. Are you suggesting this could be the beginning of the Chomin operation? Dr. Helmsley is flying to Yellowstone this morning to collect more data, sir, but we the situation... We've been following the schedule you established, Mr. Helmsley. The most important schedule in the history of mankind. Now you're telling me we have to throw it out? Yes, sir. I was wrong. Do you know how many times I've heard those words in this office? Zero. You see? So, we have a choice. You have a choice of who you want to be. Who do you want to be? You want to be the leader with grace and emotional intelligence? You want to be truly genuine? Or you want to be the shark? The fourth point of being genuine is honoring your word. A close friend of mine, several years ago, had a yes problem. You see, he's really talented at a lot of things, and as a result, people would come to him for help. And he, wanting to be helpful, would say, yeah, sure, I could help you out. You know, I could do that. And so his calendar was stacked up, and he always had stuff going on. But, you know, it's it worked out at first, but after a while, he, it occurred to him that it may not be the best arrangement as he was starting to drop the ball on more and more of these projects and disappointing people. And the worst part about it was, was that he was out of alignment with his own values, which was being a man of his word. See, he thoroughly believes that a person's word is their bond. It's very important. And so when he says he wants to, he's going to do something, he wants to do it. And if he didn't do it, which in that case he wasn't doing it, it hurt immensely. It hurt him. And so one day when he got sick and tired of being sick and tired, he turned to me and he said, Hamid, man, I'm done with this. He said, I, and as he put it, I was committing too much of my mental real estate, putting it out there to everyone. And I just couldn't keep up with that. And so now, man, I'm going to be more selective in my projects. If I say that I can do something, I can do that. And if I can't do it, I'm going to be upfront and I'm going to tell him I cannot do it. And since doing that, making that shift, he's been much happier because he's more in alignment with his values. And that took courage. Courage to look at the situation and make an honest assessment, to ask the hard questions. What's going on here? What do I want to happen? Am I honoring my values? And then the courage to do something about it. The fifth and final part of being genuine is uh, one that I found particularly challenging for me. Um, it's something I struggled with for a while. And that is deciding that, that I'm enough. You see, I fell into that common trap that many of us fall into. And that was judging myself by all these external factors that had nothing to do with me by using the accomplishments of others to determine my own self sense of value, to measure myself against other people. And it doesn't work that way because every person has their own circumstances. They've got their own abilities, their own hangups and drawbacks. People are starting off from different points and different places. The real thing to do is to cut off the outside noise and static and take an honest assessment of who you are not in terms of the economy of what you have and you know what you've achieved and all this material stuff that we normally would think of or not even in terms of how many people are singing your praises but in, honestly in how you feel about your talents and gifts your very nature what you care about your interest and who you are as a person that's incredibly powerful and that's important the thing that underlies all of the garbage that's risen to the top that we distract ourselves with it entails finding ways to fall in love with yourself when you do that work you will know that you are as good or better than anyone that you'll ever experience in this life and that it is not a race and it is not about this comparison that you are inherently valuable and worthy and as a result you'll treat yourself better now once you do these five things 
to increase your courage, to become more genuine, you're going to realize, you're going to start to identify what's important to you. You're going to start to see who you really are. And subsequently, you're also going to learn how to identify those cowardly sharks. And it's not that they're bad people. It's just that this is the only way that they know how to play the game of life. And take some kind of pride that you know a different way, that you can choose differently, that you have the awareness and the courage to take a different path, that it doesn't have to be like what you experienced. The way big changes happen is through one courageous person at a time. Just taking the responsibility for yourself and doing what you can do at your level. So how will you choose to proceed from here really is up to you. And when a difficult situation pops up, what will you do? Will you exercise your courage muscle? Or will you run and hide? I guarantee you that if you work on your courage, things will change. But if you run and hide, well, I guess things will be as they always have been. If you like what you've heard, leave a comment, hit the like button, and remember, you don't have to believe everything you hear, but do believe in something, because those who don't believe in something will fall for anything.